everybody. Welcome to my channel. My name is Nikki and I am so glad that you're here with me today. This is a video I should have done probably weeks ago uh, because I went to my first trip to Walt Disney World in about 26, 27 years. And I have so many thoughts and so many reviews that I want to share with you guys, but it's been really hard when I've had like Stitch Fix boxes coming and Scentsy stuff happening and all this crazy stuff, but I need to get into my Disney content. So I thought that today was the perfect day to go over my eight favorite things about Walt Disney World. And I hope that this helps you with um, a trip that you might be planning or if there's some things here that you haven't tried that you may wanna try for yourself. Before I get started, um, First of all, I apologize for the glare in my glasses, but I actually have my list here and because I'm blinder than a bat, <laughs> I need my glasses so that way I can uh, remember all my favorite things since I wrote it down. And um, also, if you aren't already subscribed and you love Disney content, I do lace that in here. Um, most of my channel is basically home fragrance, some unboxings, but I do um, sprinkle in some travel content and I hope to be doing that so much more now that things are opening up and things are getting back to normal. And so if that is something that you are interested in, I hope that you will stick around and hit that red subscribe button before you go. Okay. So just, um, as a background, I am a DVC member. You can see here, I have my 30 magical years shirt. Um, and I actually own on the West coast here. I live in Nevada. Um, I actually own at the villas of Grand Californian. So most of my Disney experience is Disneyland. I did go to Walt Disney World in 1994 when I was about nine years old with my brother and my dad. I, we went for one day, so I don't really remember much of it. So this trip was like, it was like it was a first trip for me. And yes, we did go when masks were still around. So you're gonna see some pictures here where, where we're wearing masks or they're down here since it was just where you were able to take pictures outside with the mask down. But because I had canceled so many Disneyland trips, I thought, you know what? Yeah, we can wait for Walt Disney World to get back to normal, but we're DVC members. We will always go back if we love it. And me and my family, I'm fully vaccinated, but my girls and I just really needed a trip and some Disney magic. So I was like, you know what, we're gonna go. So I had planned it tour, you know, obviously about seven months in advance. So um, it is me and my two daughters, um, Madeline is eight and Avery is five. And then um, their dad did join us on this trip. Okay, let's start with number one. And these aren't in any like, like this is my number one favorite thing. I am just, um, what came to mind first was obviously the first thing that we experienced and that is Disney's Magical Express. So I know you might be saying, okay, but I heard that Disney's Magical Express is going away. You were correct. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But I wanted to talk about how much I actually enjoyed this and how later on I'm going to talk about how happy I was with Disney transportation as a whole. So what I loved about Disney's Magical Express is that literally minutes after you get off the plane at MCO in Orlando, your Disney vacation starts. And that's not something that you usually get at Disneyland. At Disneyland, there isn't as big of a bubble. And also, you know, you either fly into any of the three airports in California and the vacation doesn't start unless you're actually staying on property or you're entering a Disney park. Here, I just loved that literally we grabbed our bags, we got into the Magical Express line, and as soon as we boarded, we were immersed in the bubble. I loved on here, You'll, um, I'll insert a little video or a picture here. Um, they have movies or shorts or commercials and you just get that Disney music and it just got us so excited. Even though we had landed, it, we had a long day of travel because we were coming from Nevada, we had a layover. It just really made us so excited. We forgot all about our jet lag and we were just getting so excited. We had the butterflies. Hey. Now we were 
were the last stop. So with Disney Sun Magical Express, without going into too much detail, um, a lot of the times you will have other stops. So it's not gonna be like, so we were staying at Bay Lake Tower when we first started um, our trip, because we did a split stay. We started at Bay Lake Tower at the Contemporary. So when we got into our bus, we didn't know exactly if we were gonna be the first stop or if we were gonna be the last stop. We actually stopped, I believe, at the Fort Wilderness campsites. We stopped at um, Polynesian, Grand Floridian, and then the Contemporary and Bay Lake Tower. So we were the last stop, but because we were enjoying the experience so much, and it wasn't like we were going to the parks or anything like that because it was a little bit later in the evening, um, we really weren't in a huge rush to get and drop off our bags and go somewhere. So we really enjoyed just, you know, being able to relax in a Disney transportation fun zone is what I kind of was like thinking about it. So we were the last stop, but we did not mind at all. Um, the bus driver was extremely courteous and helped us with our bags because they are making it at, as of right now to where you are carrying on your own bags. They were very kind and courteous, like I said before, and we just really loved the experience. I am really sad that this current free service is going away. I know that they said they're going to do something as a replacement. I have a feeling it's just going to be a paid service, but I feel like even if it's, you know, maybe like a $20 experience, you know, $30 experience, I really think that it is really beneficial. I will say we did not take the Magical Express back to MCO and that's just because I felt like I have TSA pre-check. We didn't need to get to the airport three hours in advance or leave that early. I wanted to have as much time still at um, Walt Disney World Resort as much as possible. So we did only take it there. We did not take the Magical Express back to the airport. Okay, number two. As we were just talking about Disney's Magical Express, I wanna talk about Disney transportation as a whole. And yes, this is a hot topic because a lot of people hate Disney transportation. I personally loved it and that is why it's in one of my favorites. So a lot of people like to have a rental car and I can really understand why people would want to. And I was actually kind of considering it too because we were doing a split stay, which meant means that we were going to be not just spending our trip at Bay Lake Tower. We also stayed at Animal Kingdom Lodge. So I was thinking it might be more beneficial to have a rental car so that way we don't have to worry about our stuff or worry about Disney cast members handling our things. But we did not need a rental car at all and I'm so glad that we didn't. So with Bay Lake Tower and Animal Kingdom Lodge, um, I had heard, not with our particular resorts, but I heard as a whole that during the time we were going, which again, you know, Disney is in the country is coming out of a pandemic, that the wait times were crazy for bus transportation. So I was a little nervous about that. We did not wait longer than 20 minutes for a bus the entire time that we were there. And I'm talking about when we were going to Disney Springs, I'm talking about when we left and to go to um, parks and things like that, we never had an issue. Also, I do know that a lot of the moderates are sometimes having a lot of, like they have to wait for multiple buses. We never had an issue finding a seat either. Even if we, um, two of us sat in one section, two of us sat in another section, we didn't mind. We're all going to the same place. And so uh, we really just didn't have an issue. And now they no longer have distancing in bus transportation. So you're probably not going to have that much of an issue, at least with that having to go through, you know, three or four buses. Um, they don't have the partitions or anything like that. And it was just, I just found that it was just a great way to get around. I didn't have to pay for a rental car. So we obviously did saved money there. Um, we did take Ubers, um, I think a couple times to a couple different places, but that's because we just didn't want to like have to go to Disney Springs and then get on another bus and go somewhere else. So it was more of like a time saver sort of thing. Now, I did say we did a split stay. So at Bay Lake Tower, bus, or when I'm talking about Disney transportation, I'm not just talking about the bus. They have, the great thing about Bay Lake Tower at the Contemporary is you have, yes, you have bus transportation service, but you also have the monorail. The monorail wasn't going to Epcot when we were there, but that wasn't a huge issue but you have the monorail and then you have the walkway to Magic Kingdom. I feel like that's what makes Bay Lake Tower and the contemporary game changers. And I loved this aspect of Bay Lake Tower was the Disney transportation that we were able to experience. 
I absolutely loved the monorail. We did take that from Magic Kingdom back over to the Contemporary just to check it out um, and to experience it. I thought it was super cool, especially because I've seen things about the monorail so many times and believe it or not, I've never used the monorail at Disneyland and I've been to Disneyland at least probably 50, 60 times in my life. So it was super cool to experience that. I love that you could just walk, you know, across the walkway from Bay Lake Tower to the Contemporary and you're right there at the um, the monorail. You can really save, you know, if you've been walking all day and you don't want to take that short walkway back, um, it's just a great option. And then the walkway from the Contemporary and Bay Lake Tower to Magic Kingdom, 10 minutes. 10 minutes and you are walking there. You don't have to worry about transportation service or anything like that. It is like you're at Disneyland almost because Disneyland, there's so many hotels that are walking distance to Disneyland. Well, Disney World doesn't really have that except at Bay Lake Tower and the Contemporary. And I do believe they now have a walkway from Grand Floridian, but um, still it doesn't beat the super easy access that you get from Bay Lake Tower and the Contemporary. So I just believe that Disney just has so many options Disney also has the Skyliner. We did not stay at a Skyliner resort, but we did take the Skyliner from um, Hollywood Studios to Riviera and then back midway through our Hollywood Studios day. That, I really didn't think that the Skyliner was that big of a deal. I'm like, oh, okay, it's cool. But you know, I have a thing about heights, so that kind of freaked me out, but I think, oh, I wanna stay on a Skyliner resort now because I feel like having a direct access to a park is essential. And number three, I'm gonna to put together, and I'm gonna talk about Epcot and Animal Kingdom. Those two parks are definitely on my list of favorites. Yes, Walt Disney World also has Hollywood Studios and they have Magic Kingdom. The only reason I'm not, and I, and I really enjoyed my time with them, but the only reason I'm not putting them on my favorites list is because I do think that they pale in comparison to Disneyland Resort. And I'll have a whole other video, hopefully in the next couple weeks, where I'll talk about well, Disney World versus Disneyland and, you know, where the winners are at, you know, whichever park. Hollywood Studios is comparable to Disney's California Adventure. California Adventure wipes it out of the water. Even though Galaxy's Edge is over at Hollywood Studios, it just, as a whole, I really enjoyed California Adventure a lot more. And then with Magic Kingdom, that's comparable, obviously, to Disneyland Park. And I just find that Disneyland Park just was better. But let's talk about Epcot and Animal Kingdom. I love how Epcot, I wish I spent more than one day there. I love how Epcot has um, the science and the space and the futuristic sort of aspect to it. But then there's also World Showcase, which gives you so much um, touches of um, the countries that they have. I loved how you can try different types of foods and shops and I didn't even get to go to all of them. I probably walked through maybe half the World Showcase. I want to go back so badly and just spend at least a day or two just at Epcot. I don't care if I go to Hollywood Studios. I don't care if I go to um, Magic Kingdom, but I want to go to Epcot. When I was talking about how they talk about sciences, I love, it's not just space and futuristic stuff that I was talking about. They do nature. I could spend all day living, going to the land. And when I talk about the land, I'm sure most of you guys know what I'm talking about if you've been to Epcot, but um, you know, they have that place where they're soaring, there is living with the land. I loved living with the land. Everyone says how boring that ride is. I loved it. I loved seeing all the agriculture and how they grow all the food that they use into a lot of their Disney restaurants in terms of vegetables and produce. It was so cool. What I loved about World Showcase though, is that each country, you really get a little taste of the culture, even though you're not there. I feel like they really, Disney is really trying their best to make it as authentic as possible. And I love that they have cast members that are actually from the countries as much as possible. I just think that that's great. And you can have a taste of the food, things that you wouldn't normally have. And you know, you get away from your, you know, burgers and pizza and all that. I mean, you can get pizza in Italy, but you know what I mean? It's just such a great, refreshing, and also educational type of touch that Disney does. I felt like with Epcot and also with Animal Kingdom, my kids probably learned more about history and science in those places, in those two places in two days than they probably did in at least two months of school. That's pretty cool. And I just can't wait to just spend 
I could spend a whole day in World Showcase, but either way, Epcot is definitely a favorite. Animal Kingdom is fantastic. The theming is unreal. I love how a lot of like, just like the buildings, they look, you know, kind of tattered and old because when you're in Africa and you're in villages like this, this is kind of what they look like. And they really did such a great job with the theming. The food was so good there. I loved all the snacks. I loved the quick service options that they had. They had so much more than the typical theme park quick service options. I think we ate at Flame Tree Barbecue. Um, I tried the Pineapple Lumpia, which is like the number one thing that I really wanted to try at Animal Kingdom. Um, a lot of the drinks were super cool and just different and themed to um, whatever type of area that you're in in Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom's cast members were probably the best out of all four parks. Really enjoyed it. We really interacted a lot with them, especially with my two girls. And with my girls, they did this wilderness exploring thing where they get a book and they go through the, the park and there's different stations and they can get little different badges when they interact with a cast member and they learned something. They learned so much fun stuff and they loved trying to get all the badges. We had such a great time at Animal Kingdom and I feel like it's such an underrated park. I'm so We were originally supposed to do just like, you know, we were gonna leave there at like four because people were like, oh, it's not really a full day park. You know, you can go. So we were just gonna go and spend some time at Disney Springs um, and we ended up spending the whole day there because we just loved it so much. And of course, you can't forget about Pandora. That was super cool. And I'll talk about um, Pandora in a little bit. Okay, that brings me to number four. Let's talk about food. And we're gonna talk about Art Smith's homecoming at Disney Springs. So I actually wanted to spend a little bit more time in Disney Springs than we did. We, had, we just spent probably about like three and a half, four hours at Disney Springs exploring. It was super busy that day. So we weren't able to do a whole lot, but I'm so glad that we got reservations for Art Smith's homecoming, which I heard was fantastic and they were right. It is true Southern comfort food. So if you love that, you know, stick to your ribs type of food, which is not quite what I usually eat because I'm usually a pretty low carb, um, it is so good. You are feeling good while you are eating this food. It is, you know, going to be, yes, it's going to be carby, but it's going to have so much flavor and seasoning and oh, it's so good. So um, my daughter's dad and then also my daughters are pretty picky eaters, but they had something literally for everyone. I'll show you guys here what Braised short ribs, a plain burger with mashed potatoes, uh, fried chicken, and just a side of mac. Looks good. I mean, can you go wrong with that? I mean, you have fried chicken. I had that braised beef with the mashed potatoes, macaroni and cheese, and that macaroni and cheese, that is probably a top two or three macaroni and cheeses I've ever had in my life. It is so good. It is so cheesy. I, I don't know if I could ever go to homecoming and not get macaroni and cheese. And their cocktails were super strong. They do have a lot of like the Southern type of like liquor flavor. So you're going to get a lot of the bourbon, things like that, but they're refreshing and they're so good. Like the whole experience was fantastic. I really recommend Art Smith's Homecoming if you are going to have dinner at Disney Springs. Okay, number five. Probably my favorite days during our week at Walt Disney World were actually our pool days. I loved our pool days way more than I loved our park days. And I love Disney parks, but I loved our pool days. Now, like I said, we did spend time at Bay Lake Tower and Animal Kingdom Lodge at Bay Lake Tower. We did spend all of our pool time at the Bay Pool over at the Bay Lake Tower. So that is the DVC pool. And then um, I, it's a lot smaller than the Contemporary Pool, but it's a lot quieter. Um, then we went to, when we were at Animal Kingdom Lodge, they do have the Jumbo House Pool. I think it's called Uzima Springs, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm wrong, you can leave me a comment down below or I'll put it here. And then um, over at Kidani, they have the Kidani pool. And I've heard amazing things about the Kidani pool. So we actually just took a quick shuttle from Jumbo House, where we were staying, over to Kidani. It takes literally two and a half minutes to get there. And we it is a super cool pool. I'm so glad that we went there. Super kid friendly. Um, I, me as an adult had a great time. Now in both locations, and this is something that is super important to parents especially, is that I love the attention that 
the lifeguards had. Those lifeguards were constantly pacing back and forth if they, because there's multiple lifeguards, obviously. There's one that's obviously on the lifeguard uh, chair, but there's lifeguards that are constantly pacing and their eyes are not leaving that pool area. They weren't like conversing and socializing or anything like that. Of course, if I asked them, you know, I did ask one a question, but they kept their eye, they weren't, I didn't find this to be rude, but they kept their eyes on the pool and then they would answer me. They were, their attention to safety was top notch. I love that they have life vests there for kids that are, you know, either not super strong swimmers or they don't know how to swim. It just gives, I feel like the pool area, which is always something that um, makes me a little nervous with my kids, regardless of how many years of swim lessons that they have. I just get nervous with my kids and pools. It's just something with me, but I feel so at ease at the Disney. The cast pool. members there also do a lot of fun games. So my, like, both of my kids were across the pool. I was watching them, but I was having a cocktail and enjoying myself relaxing because the cast members were doing fun pool games and trivia games with these kids. It was such a great experience. I loved, loved our pool time. And of course, who doesn't love water slides? Okay, we're gonna go to back to Animal Kingdom Park and we're gonna talk about Flight of Passage. Now, I know some people are gonna disagree with me. I know that there's Rise of the Resistance and we did do Rise of the Resistance which is not in my favorites, even though I really, really loved Rise of the Resistance. But I thought Flight of Passage, number one, number one ride, the best ride that Disney has ever done. Now we got lucky because there was reduced capacity at the parks and also we were went in the very beginning of May, so masks were a thing. So, you know, a lot of people just, you know, weren't at the Disney parks, even though it felt like there were a lot of people. We only waited 50 minutes and we also did a writer switch because my youngest daughter wasn't tall enough to go so my oldest daughter and her dad they spent 50 minutes in line we did the writer switch beforehand so um you know once they went on my daughter got to come with me and um go on a flight of passage again and i could not believe how fun and interactive that ride is i don't want to give spoilers out to you know those who that have not been on but i'm telling you you have to do it. You have to do Rise of the Resistance too. But for me personally, I felt like Flight of Passage was just the most cool, fun, interactive ride that Disney has ever done. Now, when we went, there was no fast passes. I don't know, fast passes are probably gonna be coming back, I assume, probably maybe in the fall or early 2022. Um, if fast passes come back, this is something that I would say is the number one fast pass that you need to get. Um, I'm sure Rise of the Resistance will be too, unless they still do this boarding group thing that they're doing. But um, also, if you don't get it, I have no problem spending an hour in line. Personally, 60 minutes is the most that I will spend in a line. That's just me. Um, but 60 is the max, and I will happily do that for Flight of Passage. Okay, let's talk about Animal Kingdom Lodge. Yes, it is a favorite. I didn't put Bay Lake Tower on there, um, but I'll talk about Bay Lake Tower later. I loved it, but Animal Kingdom Lodge is a full experience and it deserves to be in my favorites list. When we were at Animal Kingdom Lodge, so there's two buildings. There's the Jumbo House, which is the main um, cash side, and also there is a DVC floor, which is where we stayed. Um, and then there's Kidani Village, which is full DVC area. We did stay at a one bedroom Savannah View Villa at Jumbo House. First, we'll talk about the lobby. As soon as you walk in, which I will put here, I'll put when we walked into the lobby late at night after a day at Epcot, I'll put that right here. We are at Animal Kingdom Lodge and we are about to go, go inside Jumbo House for the very first time. This is fantastic. That doesn't even do it justice because it's kind of dark in there. It is magnificent. It is so beautiful. It kind of reminds me a lot of the Grand Californians. Even though there are very different local aesthetics, like Grand Californian has that Pacific Northwest type of feel, and it has like the big trees. If you go to um, Northern California, where they have just a ton of the, tr you know, 
foresty type of areas that is what Grand Californian is kind of based off of. This is obviously African, but it has a lot of the, you know, the woods and the type of details and it the lobby is just beautiful. I can just imagine how they say how it's beautiful during Christmas time, how I really just want to see it during Christmas with a tree in there. It just has to be fantastic. What really made this an, an experience were the animals. Animal Kingdom Lodge right now, especially Jumbo House, is a ghost town. I'll be honest. Um, until they open up the cash side, it's just, you could tell that it's really missing the spirit of a lot of people in there. But the animals, I cannot tell you how much I love it. I wish we spent three out of our f seven nights there and it wasn't enough. I was always in awe of the fact that I was watching giraffes, zebras, wildebeests, so many variety of animals, literally at my hotel, at my DVC villa. Every morning that we were there, I would wake up and I would have, I'm usually the first one awake anyway, I would wake up, I would make my coffee and I would go out into the balcony and I would just sit there and watch the animals. Um, I'll put, I'll insert some things here of just how amazing it was. There's three. And this is just from our balcony um, in our DVC villa. I'll put here if I can remember what our um, room number was, but it's in the fifth floor. Um, I actually might be able to pull it up on my DVC app, or not my DVC app, my Disneyland app, Disneyland. Well, Disney World app, I'm talking way too much. I need to end this. But the view we had was fantastic. Um, I spent probably most of my time at Animal Kingdom Lodge, not really like exploring the resort, but just sitting outside and enjoying these majestic animals. It was fantastic. Definitely, in my opinion, it has to be the best place on property. I visited a lot of resorts. I visited Grand Floridian. Obviously, we were at Contemporary at Bay Lake Tower. Um, I just... I just can't imagine that there is another property that could beat that. Yes, the transportation, you don't have as many options, but where are you gonna find where, there's just a peacefulness about it. When you are watching these majestic animals just walking across the savanna, and you're just, it's the most magical, wonderful experience. I wanted to say fantastic again, but I think we can make a, a drinking game out of this video about fantastic. And I talked about before, I loved the Kadani pool. We did go to Sanaa over at um, Kadani as well. And I love that they just have the shuttle that takes you to jump. You can walk from Jumbo to Kadani. I wanna say they, I wanna say they said it's like a 10 minute walk, but they have a shuttle. It takes you two, three minutes just to get there. Super small shuttle, but it comes every few minutes and that was a great option. I don't know if I could stay anywhere else right now other than Animal Kingdom Lodge. It's really hard for me to imagine that, or at least I have to visit it every time I am at Walt Disney World. Okay, if you've been watching this long, let's talk about number eight, which is Topolino's Terrace at the Riviera. I visited um, Topolino's Terrace for the character breakfast. I really, I love character breakfast or character meals. And of course with the pandemic and still as of the time of recording, a lot of those haven't come back. Some of them have, but um, Topolino's, was the one that I heard was back the mo and ha had the best experience for what we are going through in the pandemic. Now the Riviera is the newest hotel over at Walt Disney World. It's the newest DVC thing. It's fancy. Um, I thought the Riviera was just okay to be honest. Um, it wasn't a favorite and um, it, it was beautiful. There was a lot of places that were beautiful. This restaurant was absolutely breathtakingly gorgeous. Now it is a character breakfast but the food was good. And while there were COVID restrictions, obviously, the characters were constantly in rotation. So even though they weren't able to come directly to our table, we saw them multiple times. They would, you know, wave. You could definitely tell that they were trying to do as much interaction with the kids and families as much as possible while being at a distance. I can only imagine how it's going to be when there's no more of, I don't want to say this nonsense because it was there for a reason, but, you know, when it's really back to a true normal, 
how great the experience is going to be because I thought we had a pretty awesome time. So just imagine when there's not any of the COVID restrictions. But literally the best part of Topolinas Terrace is the view that you get on the terrace outside. You really need to um, make time for at least 15 minutes to be to go out onto the terrace and just take in the amazing, beautiful view. I'm gonna insert here um, just a little snippet that I took from the view over at the uh, Topolinas Terrace at Riviera. I feel like that doesn't even do it justice. It is absolutely breathtaking. I can only imagine going at dinner time, which I hear that this restaurant is amazing during dinner time, but just seeing it at night too has to be so pretty. So I really think that um, making a trip to Topolinas Terrace just for the view alone, um, I don't think you can go wrong. Okay, guys, that is my top eight favorite things at Walt Disney World, at least from my trip in May. I hope to be able to go. I'm debating if I'm going to try to do a solo trip next year over to Walt Disney World. I'd really love to. If not, maybe I'll take my girls in 2022 for fall break. Um, but I mean, I can only imagine how more amazing it's going to be next time we go when there's now no masks, there's no more um, hopefully a lot less craziness. We can see fireworks, um, parades, hopefully we can't wait. But overall, we love Walt Disney World and we're so grateful that we're DVC members. So that way we know that we are gonna be back again and again. And I hope that you got some good information out of this or enjoyed wa watching this and hearing me babble. I do plan on coming back with a couple more videos from my trip. I'm going to talk about my experience over at Bay Lake Tower at the Contemporary. I'm going to talk about more detail about Animal Kingdom Lodge and our one bedroom Savannah view, even though Animal Kingdom Lodge, here's a spoiler, even though that was my favorite resort, I like the room better at Bay Lake Tower. So I'll talk about that and also talk about, again, Walt Disney World versus Disneyland in uh, very different categories. So. Uh, thanks again for watching. I hope that you enjoyed yourself. Give this video a thumbs up if you did, and I will talk to you guys again next time. Bye-bye.